Doom just pushed its Vulcan update finally, so now the Vulcan API is available through Doom's settings in-game. That means that it's got OpenGL and Vulcan. It does not run DX11. This is an OpenGL 4.5 game. Previously did it also run OpenGL 4.3 with AMD cards. Today, we're looking at the Vulcan benchmark performance against OpenGL, so we're specifically looking for scaling on AMD's cards and on NVIDIA's cards. I've only got a few cards tested here. We didn't do the whole bench suite because really we're just looking for kind of architectural scaling abilities. It was not a full comprehensive bench of every card out there, but we're looking at the GTX 1080 to see how Pascal does, the GTX 970 to see how the previous generation Maxwell does, and the RX 480 to see how AMD does with the new Polaris architecture. AMD internally was boasting close to 30% gain, so we'll be validating that here. Now one thing that Vulcan does, like DX12, they both sort of shift the workload from the CPU more to the GPU in instances where it makes sense, like draw calls. A draw call is when the CPU sends an actual signal to the GPU and says, it's time to draw a triangle or a primitive or whatever, that is a draw call. That's a pretty abusive process if you have a lot of geometry on the screen. So for games with heavy geometric complexity and DX11, all these draw calls mean that you're really dragging down one component or the other. Normally, uh, the GPU is not performing to its fullest potential because the CPU is dragging it down or something similar to that. So with Vulkan, it's the same idea as DX12, same sort of asynchronous compute is available and exposed through Vulkan, uh, but it is up to the game developers to actually leverage that technology. So just like we talked about with Chris Roberts from Star Citizen, if you just wrap the game with this API and point to it, it's actually going to have a negative output than if you build properly from the ground up. And id Software did work to properly implement Vulkan. So let's look at the benchmark results. The table on the screen now shows the components that we use for testing this game and most other games. And the next interesting thing to do would be to pair these cards, high-end cards, with a lower-end CPU to see just how far you can get with a low-end CPU with Vulkan as opposed to OpenGL. But today we're just looking at GPUs. So at 1080p with Ultra settings, the GTX 1080 shows an average FPS that increases 19.4% from OpenGL to Vulkan, and that's a 139.7 FPS with OpenGL 4.5 and a 168.8 FPS average with Vulkan. The GTX 970 actually has an average FPS decrease of about 1%, or mostly the same otherwise, and there's a more variable range in Vulkan testing than with OpenGL, so we're seeing between 105 and 108 FPS average and the actual average, the average of all these numbers, uh, all these test passes is 106.9 FPS, and that's against the 108 FPS for OpenGL. The RX 480 shows a 30.65% increase, that's even bigger than what we're seeing on the GTX 1080, and that's moving from 85 FPS average with OpenGL to 111 FPS average with Vulkan, so a pretty fair increase there. Looking at the millisecond time, so this is the frame time between frames, the average time in milliseconds, the GTX 1080's average millisecond between frames is 5.9 milliseconds, and it's very consistent, so we don't see any stuttering or spurious frame output. The GTX 970 is at 9.36 milliseconds, again, fairly consistent. And the RX 480 is at 9 milliseconds and also fairly consistent at 1080p Ultra. For 1440p, the story gets a little bit less interesting on the Pascal and Maxwell side. The GTX 1080 only shows a 5% increase, and now that we've kind of moved into more GPU-intensive frame rates, I guess this makes some sense. And that moves us from 109 FPS average to 114.55 FPS average with Vulkan, so 5%. Looking at the GTX 970, we have a 0.36% decrease, but for all intents and purposes, it is effectively identical between OpenGL and Vulkan. We're seeing 69.5 versus 69.25 FPS, and depending on how you average it, they are pretty much the same. The RX 480 has a 29.3% increase, so it's maintained its increase for the most part and has a pretty heavy lead here, moving from 57 FPS to 73.7 FPS average. Now, uh, the reason I'm presenting these numbers this way as opposed to the normal way we kind of do a head-to-head -head comparison as I go through it, for this, I'm strictly comparing OpenGL and Vulkan on specific cards or architectures. So when we talk about the RX 480, 
having a huge increase of almost 30 percent it's still lower performing than the gtx 1080 which should be given the price disparity uh, and it's still very similar to the gtx 970 and it just it really just means that polaris scales pretty well uh, in this particular title with vulcan it does not mean it will apply to every game with vulcan as we saw in the talos principle for example uh, so it's not a direct head-to-head -head between cards. Look at it as a head-to-head -head between APIs on specific cards and architectures. Now, as for the millisecond times for 1440p Ultra, the GTX 1080 outputs 8.7 milliseconds with a tight range. GTX 970, 14.44 milliseconds, and there's more variance in this particular range. Uh, so we do see some more occasional stutters, but it's really not that bad. And the RX 480 is at 13.57 milliseconds and is fairly fluid. At 4K Ultra, the GTX 1080s are effectively identical on OpenGL and Vulkan. There's really no difference here. The RX 480 outputs a 24.7% increase from 29 FPS to 36.15 FPS and is still unplayable. You can't play it on either of these frame outputs with either of these APIs, so the, don't read too far into that. But the important part is that this scaling has maintained across all three big resolutions, and we're still seeing big gains even at 4K, which is not really where the 480 is a good performer. Latency on the GTX 1080 is about 16.9 milliseconds between frames on average, and the RX 480 is about 27.7 milliseconds between frames on average. Again, totally unplayable. As for 1% and 0.1% lows, for all of these benchmarks, resolutions, they're fairly tightly timed with OpenGL, and we don't presently measure that for Vulkan because of the uh, limitations we have with our measurement tools. So as stated, the gains for the RX 480 are pretty large going from OpenGL to Vulkan. The GTX 1080 has pretty good gains at 1080p. You're not really going to be playing at 1080p, probably, unless you're really desperately trying to hit 144 hertz or something. Uh, and then the GTX 970 is basically identical between the two, with the RX 480 really being the only one that outputs a consistent lead at all three big resolutions that we tested. The thing here, don't read too far into this because uh, this is one game with one API change or implementation of Vulkan. So as we've seen in games with DX12 or the Talos principle, you, it, it, just because it, a card does a certain performance in one game with one API doesn't mean it will stretch across all games with that API. Because these APIs, even though they're powerful, it really depends on how the developers implement them and they've got to build for certain support uh, lists. So Ashes of Singularity, for example, supports MDA and can support really odd configurations like a 970 with a 390X and Crossfire slash SLI. And not every game will support that just because it has DX12. So uh, the point here is that these numbers are for Doom and Doom only, uh, but it does look pretty good for the RX 480 in terms of scalability with Polaris from OpenGL to Vulkan. And the 1080 is not bad at 1080p, but otherwise pretty boring for Maxwell from the limited test run we performed on it. So that's all for this video. Hit the Patreon link in the post show video to help us out directly. Subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you all next time.